Da oltre 1500 anni, un gruppo molto particolare di monaci buddhisti zen ha stabilito in questa regione remota della Cina la propria residenza. È una zona che è stata proibita agli estranei per quasi tutta la sua storia. Qui ha le sue origini il buddismo zen. Qui i monaci seguono la filosofia della reincarnazione, da loro chiamata ruota della vita. Nel corso della storia, la vita di questi uomini pacifici è stata sconvolta da guerre, invasioni e dalla distruzione dei loro templi sacri. Per resistere, hanno sviluppato una forma di autodifesa basata sull'osservazione dei movimenti degli animali e sul loro credo religioso. La chiamano Kung Fu. Loro sono i monaci Shaolin. Shaolin is a symbol for the Buddhism, the power, the spirit, and the Kung Fu in our Chinese people's mind. Ora, per la prima volta, la loro storia viene narrata in forma di spettacolo teatrale da un gruppo creativo internazionale. I was shown video footage of, of the sort of incredible things that the monks do, and of course they're fantastic. I then started to read a little bit about their history and the more I read about it, the more it absorbed me and, and thought that, you know, if we were going to have a show, it shouldn't just be a Kung Fu demonstration, that it should be a show that helped to tell a story about them or indeed sort of enlighten people to their fantastic history. The team we've gotten together to do the show really is the best. Barrington Phelan, who's composed all the music, who's done things like Inspector Morse. Mika Begeza, who's the director of the Millennium Dome show, and his assistant Darshan are, are both fantastic. I mean, we really have got a, an amazing creative team. Nel febbraio del 1999 il gruppo giunse a Pechino, diretto al Tempio Shaolin. It had been six, seven months I'd been working on Wheel of Life before we got to China. And so I suppose firstly, you know, arriving in Beijing was just, God, I can't believe we're here. Actually, you know, we're actually going to go to the Shaolin Temple and meet the abbot. It all starts from here, really. We wanted to get there very, very quickly and we missed the plane, of course, and uh, took a, another plane and went a detour and uh, landed somewhere in the middle of China, not knowing where we were. Nobody spoke a word of English, so it was quite an adventure. There was the three-hour bus ride to, to Dengfeng, the, the nearest town to the temple, and then another 45-minute drive on very bumpy roads out to the temple. Eventually we did get to, to the temple tired and exhausted. It was exactly as I expected it to be. This is sort a of quiet, serene, spiritual place that you could hear all of the birds and the chants and the bells. And the moment you step foot inside the monastery, you feel the spirit and it turns you inside out. It turns you into a being that is charged with energy, with their energy. I was just in awe of how peaceful and quiet it was and how uh, we were so privileged to be allowed to visit all the temples within the complex.
I love being there. It's a very spiritual place. Uh, it's very, very old. It has a lot of history, and you get that, that sense of history as, as you're walking around. I saw these monks walking around the temple and could imagine them walking exactly the same way as they did 1,500 years ago. And indeed, you know, on the floor you could see indentations of where people walked 1,500 years ago. Uh, uh, I was quite surprised because I expected them to be far more formal than they actually are. They're very easygoing, very friendly. It really is a family. They're uncles, brothers and parents to each other. I think one of the questions that people ask more than anything else is the dichotomy of the fact that they have these fighting skills but also their Buddhist monks. How does that work? Uh I, like any production manager or producer, had great goals to achieve in the first day, the first minutes that we arrived, right, we, we need to do this, we need to do that, and of course the abbot just said, before we do anything, he wanted us to have a good look around the temple. The abbot was very clever in uh, making sure that we all absorbed the atmosphere. <laughs> Yeah, you can see that he, his eyes always, uh, you know, uh, uh, seeing you and uh, smiling at you. When we were in the forest of pagodas, it was the morning birds and the absolute tranquility. And I found that this incredible sort of echoing effect from each of the different statues shattering around the head. It was it's absolutely beautiful. What I found here is being surrounded by these very devout and very special people that have no material needs at all. It does bring a very special strength to your life that we could all learn from. Whilst we were um, walking around the temple, of course Barrington had his little DAT player with him and he recorded the ambient sounds from around the temple and um, many of those sounds were incorporated in his soundtrack for the show. We were given the exclusive and very rare honour of being given access to all the most sacred prayer gongs and drums. Ha! <laughs> That's long. How long was that? By the time we actually got round to, to seeing the monks, I think we were all um, in tune with the spiritual and the physicality of what, what was happening there in the monastery. And once we saw the monks, we were just completely stunned. Oh, it was incredible. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to see them in the flesh. I've, you know, for months I've been looking at them on video. It's just incredible to see the real thing. The difference between having seen you know, the video of the show that they did, being just a yard away, you feel like you're really part of it. And we're all sitting here shattered. I've got quite a lump in my throat watching them. Mm. Did you? Yeah. sense their physicality, it is, it is such hard movement, mm. and there's such accuracy. to 
know that you're going to make a show, make a piece with these monks was like uh, champagne in your body. The bubbles just uh, started to tingle all over. La produzione aveva un'idea della storia che voleva rappresentare. Tuttavia, prima di poter procedere con lo spettacolo, era necessario avere l'approvazione ufficiale dell'onorevole Shai Yongxing, l'abate del Tempio. We arranged to have a meeting with him on at the end of our last day. And we were all very nervous because we wanted to tell the story to the abbot and get his approval. La storia narra di un imperatore che chiese di essere protetto da un esercito invasore. L'abate accettò di aiutarlo con i suoi monaci soldati. Dopo aver sconfitto il nemico, l'imperatore convocò i monaci e ordinò loro di diventare suoi fedeli servitori e di proteggerlo per sempre. Ma i monaci rifiutarono perché dovevano tornare alla propria vita spirituale nel tempio. Infuriato da questa risposta, l'imperatore scatenò la sua vendetta. Sopravvissero cinque giovani monaci, il cui compito fu tramandare gli insegnamenti di pace, armonia e spiritualità. He corrected us on a few historical points and gave us a few other little bits in the story that we didn't know about. I think the story that uh, we have for the show fills me with confidence that it's the right story. It's a story that bears the philosophy of the monks and it bears the philosophy of uh, East meeting West. It has past, present and future in it. Dopo aver parlato con i produttori, l'abate, il Fung Jung, diede il permesso di procedere con lo spettacolo. <laughs> At the end of the trip, I had a very good feeling of what the atmosphere of the show should be like. Um, and I think we, we went home all quite jubilant that we'd really achieved something and that we'd be coming back very soon. Ora poteva iniziare il lavoro vero e proprio. Il gruppo creativo sviluppava le idee. They're fighting around the battlements and then it ends up being the last two guys, one good guy, one bad guy. Per lo scenografo Mark Fisher, la sfida fu creare una versione rotante del Tempio Shaolin che potesse entrare nei camion e fosse adattabile ai vari teatri. Il compito di Annie Curtis Jones fu creare 40 costumi cinesi autentici. Patrick Woodroff, il designer delle luci, dovette creare un ambiente che rendesse il senso dell'atmosfera del Tempio. Tuttavia, mancava ancora un elemento fondamentale, i monaci stessi. Nell'aprile del 1999, il gruppo tornò al Tempio. Il compito era trovare 25 monaci di età compresa tra i 7 e i 60 anni. completely different place. It was a lot of tourists. Our last visit was here during um, Chinese New Year and it was, it, there was probably about 20 tourists here a day. At the moment it's, it's not only uh, weekend but it's also May, the first May Day here. And uh, so it's just, you know, tens of thousands of people. <laughs> And uh, we're going to have to do the rest of today's casting with a, a public audience as well, so uh, uh, it does make life uh, a little bit complicated. Anybody interested in Buddhism, in Kung Fu, that's the place, you just go there. In the monastery, there was a courtyard with uh, slabs of stone and dried out grass where they started to perform their, their, their feats. And 
we had to stop it. We just had to say, look, you're absolutely fantastic, but we have to find a different uh, a place to do this. They were so eager to show it absolutely anywhere. After that, uh, we actually took them to uh, a little stage where it was a wooden floor, so they had a little bit of spring. And every monk we saw was just so committed to their Buddhism and their Kung Fu. <laughs> Well,我第一次那个知道这剧组过来拍片，等于我心情很激动。那个，呃，我我希望能选到我，我成为这个剧组的其中一员。然后那个，呃，为我们少林寺来宣扬那个少林武术。I mean, this is, this is the stuff we, in, in the massacre. You, know? you yeah. don't audition masters. You uh, choose who is suitable for, for the show. We think we saw between 250 and 300 different uh, monks, and we had the terrible task of trying to whittle that down to 30. <laughs> Every single one of them came out there and performed, you know, 150%. You don't often get that when you go into a, a dry rehearsal room, and it was uh, truly exciting. Fighters, uh, spear fighters, stick fighters, uh, people who can uh, break granite, lie on beds of nails. So it's it's been quite difficult to actually find and pinpoint people. Obviously, they can do the the act, let's say, or, or the trick, uh, but they have to be able to perform. And judging that is is being quite difficult. For the soldier monks, we're looking for um, no younger than 18, really. Uh, I'd like them to be an average age of at least 22, 23. One of our problems is they actually look a lot younger than uh, what we're probably used to in the West. Now here comes the number 38, Cheng Xinying, 27 years old. At the 
moment we've got three young kids that we really like. And we've got five mature fighting soldiers that we're interested in. It's just a tough choice. Number 22, Guo Kaimin. Uh, Sir Jin Ye Sou. Uh, what's his name? Judging by his physique, I can see he's 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 quite powerful. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yes. And right. he fit he fits and uh, he's, uh, the he bill of a you know, a mature soldier yeah. monk. How old is he? Thirty years old. watch them when they're relaxing is is how they take care of the, the younger kids mm. within the company. And that's very touching. Yeah. Number 31, Chen Wujing. Chen Wujing. How old is he? 70 years old. Well, he kind of represents the, the, the whole kind of history of the monks. And there are practicing monks uh, who are here at that age. So we want to get the full range right from the elder monk through the soldier monks and all the way down to the wee five-year-olds practicing. And I think, you know, we've kind of built that into the story, so we should show it physically as well. And he's, he's um, you notice that everybody gravitates to him. There's so much love and respect uh, for the elder. Um, it's a very different feeling from, from the West, how, how people treat the elders uh, and older teachers there. There's no disrespect here, at, and not, you know, a shed of it in their bones. We need 25 in the cast, and we need to get 10 extra as, as the reserve team, because they will get tired and there will be injuries, as they are. You know, they're athletes. Got 40 names, yeah, and this includes the small child as number 40. We found a fantastic cast, and uh, I've seen things which I've never seen before done so exquisitely. I've been looking at movement and, and uh, dance and uh, various different acrobatics over the last 30 years, but this is absolutely tops it all. It's absolutely fantastic and very, very awe inspiring. This is the big moment. Um, I've got the right performance for the show, and I feel that the show is going to be very exciting. And I look forward in July working with them. Right. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank The discipline, the uh, thirst for, for peace and channeled strength and power is what I'm going to take home with me. Mika and Darshan have sort of uh, been doing their casting and we've sort of gotten to a, a, an A-list of people that we want from that group of uh, uh, Shaolin monks. And we'll give it all to the Feng Jung and it will be his approval as to who can come 
on the tour with us and who can't. We've seen uh, some really amazing things that we had not seen before. And uh, obviously he'd selected his best monks because uh, some of the things we saw were, were absolutely incredible. With the uh, Fung Jun's approval, um, if we could have the selection that we have chosen, then uh, we are sure that we can put together a fantastic show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nel giugno 1999, Annie ed Elizabeth partirono per la Cina per creare i costumi dello spettacolo. It was just an awesome, you know, daunting, very exciting challenge. Once we got ourselves into China, it was just amazing, actually. One had seen The Last Emperor, and I had a kind of a layman's knowledge. But obviously, once you start digging in, there's more and more details. It's just like layers of the onion. The first thing I had to do was start digging through all the, you know, all the costume books and the history. Obviously, I had to be very careful not to offend, because when one goes into someone else's culture, you have to be really respectful. We went off to the factory who um, actually make all the costumes for the um, Peking Opera and that was uh, totally astonishing to see the work being very traditional, you know. Every, all the embroideries were stenciled out and it was all done by hand on the looms. Enormous amount of work. And there it was being done as it had been done for hundreds of years and it was just a total sort of wonderment really to see all this incredible work going on. This is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. This is the same, same fabric. It's so thicker. Her original sketches were, were outline sketches because she really wanted to see what these people could do with her basic designs and didn't want to sort of presume anything and together the costume shop in Zhengzhou and, and Annie have produced some fantastic costumes. <laughs> Well, they're very proud of, of the work they're doing, and quite rightly so. You know, I mean, they're, they're, their standards are incredibly high. Everything was handmade. It's what they do. You know, that's, they are the masters of their craft. <laughs> Nel luglio 1999 i monaci arrivarono in Gran Bretagna per iniziare le prove. Operazione che si rivelò meno semplice del previsto per gli interessati. Meeting at the airport when the f they first arrived at Heathrow was just fantastic. But when a sea of orange robes walked through arrivals, everybody out of respect just it just moved completely out of the way as they walked through and there were just 26 beaming, smiling faces. The cultural shock must have been absolutely enormous. Uh, 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 they came in 
I detected no jet lag in the first day and they were just, they were so full of energy. I had to keep pleading with them to calm down. It's difficult for them and it's difficult for us to cope with their energy, but they're, they're monks. They almost behaved like young lambs being out in the field for the very first time, leaping and jumping around to bring this energy back into the show it was certainly a challenge, but a wonderful challenge. <laughs> The rehearsal period is very tight, and to be honest, they are not actors. And this is their very first time to uh, play their kung fu as well as acting. And this, we have to play another character. So, we have a few difficulties. Because it makes our expression and movement seem like we are also involved in it. So, it makes it difficult. The process of choreographing in a disciplined way that gives them uh, visual cues, sound cues, is almost against their natures. La direttrice di scena, Teresa Foch, ebbe l'arduo compito di dirigere lo spettacolo e fare da interprete fra i monaci e il gruppo creativo. My first language is Cantonese, and all the monks speak Mandarin. It's pretty hard work, but I enjoyed it very much. We have had uh, problems in communicating to these uh, brilliant monks in, on two levels. One is the linguistic difficulty, of course, and the second one is the cultural difference between their ordinary lifestyle as monks and uh, showing off in, in a way that is a display rather than a show. They think that it's very weird to them, but they try very hard. They are improving uh, every day. Okay. To me, I, I just wish I could speak Chinese, obviously. And I have to go through two interpreters to get my views heard. And I don't have the luxury of doing something and, and maybe trying something new. There's definitely an art of actually working through an interpreter. And we have to be very physical through how, how we ask for, for things from, yeah. from the monks. But it, it just did it so fast. La produzione era pronta ad accogliere alcuni attori cinesi residenti in Inghilterra, fra cui Cecil Cheng, il cattivo di Goldfinger, il film di James Bond. Oh, working with these monks is superb. I mean, I really enjoy it. See, every day is a holiday for me. <laughs> Anybody who, who loves uh, Jackie Chan and, and Bruce Lee movies is, is going to love this, because this is, this is the real thing before your eyes. You, there, there's no... There's no kind of trickery, and you see it all happening, and it, it, it's very dangerous. Nel giro di un mese, i monaci, la direttrice di scena e il gruppo creativo avevano trovato un metodo di lavoro che cominciava a dare i suoi frutti. In their lunch hours, they used to come in and try on the emperor's robes and the general's robes and the hats, and the cameras would come out, and they just loved it. We've saved all the hard, tough kung fu tricks, really, until the very end of the show. And it's like a 10 minute uh, session where they can just do the most difficult acts possible. We left the party tricks for the end and for the, for the audience to go out with a uh, breath aghast. Il test fu un'anteprima in un teatro del West End davanti a un pubblico di critici, esperti di spettacolo e agenti. We've invited promoters from around the world. Uh, to gauge their interest so that uh, we can sell the tour. That's what it's all about. Last couple of days, just in dress rehearsal, the reaction from uh, as old cynics, you know, in the business has been quite incredible. All the crew working on it were really, really surprised. You never really understood what these people were going to do. The script would say, you know, 20 guys run on and fight each other or they do their meditation scene. But we didn't know really what it meant until 
we saw them in the theatre. And then you had the sense of these rather holy, uh, dignified, patient men, you know, with this enormous skill, and also with this extraordinary sense of humour. And what amazed me was how they spent all their time laughing, and I have no idea what they're saying, of course, but um, they think it's pretty funny. <laughs> Hello, Ni Ni Ho Li Shang Hui. Oh, Li Shang Hui. My name is Li Shang Hui. My name is Patrick. Yeah. What's unusual is that most of the people that we work for, big superstars, have huge egos, and the the monks, by definition, have none, or at least they strive to have none, and that's rewarding, satisfying feeling for all the people who are working under stress and under tension around them. That permeates the whole atmosphere. It's only at the very last minute that you, you bring all the disciplines together of lighting, costume, sound, scenery, acting, music, fighting. It's only really at that point when you put those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together that you have any idea that you got it right. ebbe un successo strepitoso. It's so nice to be here doing it for real, you know. I can't believe we've done it. Excellent, brilliant. They're very talented individuals. Yeah, lovely. Lovely boys. Okay. I mean the reaction of the first night after the performance. I mean I've never experienced anything like that. We went backstage and the two of us got thrown around. And I've never experienced that kind of excitement before. It's the beginning of the long journey. Yes, around But the world we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nel giro di poche settimane, i monaci furono invitati a comparire al Royal Variety Show, al Millennium Dome e in altre decine di programmi televisivi mentre preparavano la tournée mondiale. Yeah, I think the monks really are having a great time over here. I think they have a great time everywhere they go because of the, the, the kind of people they are. They see things in a different way to, to what we do. I don't think they have the same stresses and strains in life that we do. Green. Red. Red. Yellow. Yeah. You like yellow? Yellow. Yellow. You're very angry, I think. I'm not angry, I'm hungry. Oh, There are family that are on the road as if they were at the temple. Most of them have been together for the most part of their lives. The togetherness shows on stage. When they perform together in unison, they're like a school of fish. They're so fast, so quick, changing directions, going up and down and side to side, that you, you would think it's one person. This 
是我们非常怀念寺院的平静的生活，因为在寺院里面，我们每天就是习武修禅。来到这以后呢，就是每天演出，到世界各地巡回演出。在演出以后呢，观众对我们少林武术非常热情。Absolutely fantastic, brilliant. I thought it was really good. I liked it when um, the men um, they lay down on the needles. Get a sack! I thought the things with the spears <laughs> when they were holding the people up was really good. Every国家等于说,我们每飞到一个国家,到一个国家去宣传少林功夫,弘扬少林武术,我感觉到非常的激动,有这么多的武术爱好者,爱好我们少林功夫,我觉得我是一个非常幸运的一个男孩。They're all every day in rehearsal that you know bits and pieces that they're doing, they're always trying to hone them, make them better. For instance, the monk who stands on two fingers, he believes in two years' time he'll be able to do it on one. That's the whole philosophy behind the Shaolin Temple, is that if you believe you can do it, and you study and you dedicate yourself to doing it, that nothing is impossible. So I will not be at all surprised when he does it one day. <laughs>